In this video, I'm going to show you three hidden tricks that you can use on your Rocket Box CJ controller. Do you ever think that your beginner DJ controller isn't enough for you? That the latest and newest gear are a lot better than what you have right now? Well, today I'm gonna show you that your beginner DJ controller is a lot better than what you think. As there are three hidden free features that you can use right now to better DJ and make mixes with Rekordbox DJ 5 or 6. Now, if you guys want to follow along with this tutorial and practice with the same tracks I use here, you can download them for free by joining my membership program. Besides getting access to all my DJ edits, you'll also get access to my secret DJ tutorials like my 1 hour long Scratch Course Masterclass, my 30 minute student mix breakdown, and a whole lot more. Anyway, with that said, let's begin. Here we have the Pioneer DDJ400 running on Rekordbox DJ. Anyway, our first technique for today is performed with a filter knob. Now when you typically use this knob, it acts as a high pass filter or low pass filter. This can work nicely with transitioning tracks or adding a cool effect here and there, but the secret about this knob is that it can do more than just be a filter. To activate all these CFX functions, go to your settings, Select View. Scroll down until you see the Section Entitled Effect panel. Then select Beat Effects plus Sound Color Effects. Now check your top right corner. A CFX section should now display with a 3-dot selection and a 1-dot selection. Click the 3-dot selection. This should enable you to adjust the color effects to each individual channel in the center here. For example, if on channel 1 I want to add a noise color effects, I can just hit the drop down menu and select noise. Now a scenario where you could use this is during the build up section of a track to increase the tension and hype. A technique that DJs like James Hype use with the noise sound effect is to activate it on a channel with no audio playing. Then use the crossfader to add cuts to the sound. Another effect that I personally like and use is a dub echo effect. It basically adds a more spacey echo to your track as you turn the filter knob clockwise or counterclockwise. So it works as a great transition effect to mix to the next song flawlessly. Now keep in mind that you're not limited to these two C effects. Make sure to play around and find the effect that works better for you and your style of DJing. Anyway, our second trick works best for beat matching tracks, so whether you're a beginner DJ or an advanced DJ, this is a setting change you surely need to make. Now in beat matching tracks, you may find that a track's BPM may be completely off from the next track. For example, I have a song here with a BPM of 140 and another one at 70 BPM. At first glance, these two tracks appear to be too far apart to mix at all. However, if you notice, 70 BPM is actually half of 140 BPM. So technically, their tempos match together. But if I press sync to beat match these two tracks together, by default, this will happen. So we can quickly remedy this by going to our settings, clicking controller, scrolling down till you see the beat slash BPM sync, and clicking allow beat slash BPM sync with double slash half BPM. Mm -hmm. 
Now you guys know two awesome hidden tricks to take your DJing to the next level. But if you really want to improve your DJ game, it's no secret that the path of musical success lies in making your own music. So lately, that's exactly what I've been doing. So by taking Arthur DJ's class on remixing that music, Digital Production Basics. There it teaches you how to remix songs and make them sound like your own. And those lessons are perfect for DJs who not only want to up their production game, but their DJ performance game as well. So if you want to check out that music production masterclass and a whole lot more, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link down below, we get two free months of free membership on Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. And Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With over 20,000 classes of graphic design, music production, songwriting, and more, which are all fueled by passionate creatives like myself, you're pretty much set for life if you want to learn anything new efficiently, effectively, and economically. Because an annual subscription on Skillshare just costs us $10 a month. So make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deep and existing passions, get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. Anyway, let's now move on to the next secret trick. Now, our third secret trick applies to all the DJs who are into scratching. And this setting change is a godsend that basically makes your cheap crossfader act as a premium one. So basically, we'll reduce the cut lag of our crossfader, enabling us to cut sharper and easier. So by default, our cut lag is 1.0 millimeters, which means that when our crossfader is 1.0 millimeters away from the end of the edge of the crossfader section, no music will be heard. So ideally, we want the music to be heard the moment the crossfader no longer touches the edge of the crossfader section. So all we have to do to get close to that is go to our settings, then click controller, then click mixer, then scroll down till you see the crossfader section. And simply bring the cut lag fader all the way to the left side, enabling 0.3 millimeter cutting. Also to be safe, make sure your crossfader curve is all the way to the right side. Now our crossfader will be a heck of a lot sharper. And that's it. Let me know which trick was your favorite and why. And with that said, I'll see you all in the next one.